This program aims to find solutions to your medical queries. It seeks answers to common health problems that have been hounding you. We will help you out in finding answers to your medical concerns. I'm Angel Jacob and this is MedTalk, your weekly on-air health consultation here on the Solar News Channel. Bob Marley, Walt Disney, Manuel L. Quezon, and Comedy King Dolphy. These are some of the famous personalities who have succumbed to pulmonary disease. Pulmonary disease refers to disorders affecting the lungs, such as asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, pneumonia, tuberculosis, and lung cancer. According to the World Health Organization, Three people die every minute due to pulmonary disease and is one of the top five leading causes of death in the Philippines. These alarming statistics are just one of the challenges that the international and national health organizations are facing. Despite pulmonary disease killing four million every year, most people are still ignorant about the killer disease. What are the symptoms of pulmonary disease? And what can we do to avoid this killer disease? Factors that cause lung disease are everywhere, from the smoke emitted by factories to the smoke belched out by vehicles on the street, to the secondhand smoke you inhale from the cigarette smoking person across the hall. Silently, it has been killing you without you knowing it. But how can you spot the first signs of lung disease? And what can you do to keep your lungs healthy? Joining us is Dr. Noel J. Fabian, adult pulmonologist from the Asian Hospital and Medical Center and the San Juan de Dios Hospital. Also with us is Dr. Enrico R. Aquino, an adult pulmonologist and consultant of internal and pulmonary medicine at the Makati Medical Center. You can participate in the discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678 or follow us on Twitter at SolarTVNews, hashtag MedTalk, or email us at medtalk at solartv.ph. Let's start our discussion. Hello, doctors. Hi, Angel. Hi, Angel. How can you tell if someone's lungs are healthy? Well, in general, um, when you talk about healthy lungs, of course, you should not be coughing, which is uh, one of the most common symptoms of, uh, of pulmonary disease. No? And of course, you should not be short of breath. You should be able to engage in your activities of daily living without getting, uh, we call it disney or uh, short of breath. And uh, you should be able to do a little extra in terms of physical exertion without uh, having to, you know, catch your breath too much. Mm -hmm. Dr. Aquino, do you like I, to that? Well, I agree. Uh, of course, uh, the most common symptoms of uh, any lung disease, for that matter, are cough and uh, difficulty of breathing or shortness of breath, which lead which leads to uh, or shortness of breath that leads to like limitation of his day-to-day uh, -day activities. No? So, a patient who has uh, healthy lungs, or a person who has healthy lungs, is ideally void of any of these symptoms. Mm -hmm. That is as far as the uh, physiology or the function of the lungs is concerned. Uh, of course, as far as the anatomy of the lungs is concerned, that's a, an entirely different thing. You have to look at the lungs uh, from the medical point of view. But uh, from our uh, regular day-to-day -day activity, then we just talk about physiology or the function of the lungs. A patient who is uh, void of these uh, symptoms, I would say, would have healthy lungs. We have someone on Facebook. We uh, have Jeremy Laxon. He asks, Dr. Aquino, Dr. Fabian, what types of lung disease is most common dito sa atin sa Pilipinas? Dr. Aquino, would you like to start? Well, there are quite a number of uh, respiratory diseases which are common. Okay, I could not think of only one, okay? Very common are the acute upper respiratory tract infections and the usual cough, colds, okay? Of course, there's this bronchial asthma, there's chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD, there's pulmonary tuberculosis, okay? There's pneumonia, and there's lung cancer, 
Of course, there are a lot of other uh, respiratory diseases, respiratory uh, entities no, that we can find in, the, in textbooks. But uh, offhand, I could think of this uh, as far as my practice is concerned, no, these are the most uh, common diseases that I encounter in hospital practice. Does it depend on the time of year? Like maybe towards Christmas time, there's a certain type of um, cough or a certain type of allergen that, that triggers one who, who has asthma or one who has a certain lung disease or maybe during the summer, there's also a certain type of uh, trigger that happens to individuals uh, during the time of the year. Dr. Fabian? Well, uh, when you ask that question, the first thing that comes to mind would be my patients who are seasonal asthmatics. No? So usually these patients get exacerbations uh, certain times of the year, you know, like if it's uh, already getting cold, when they are sensitive to cold weather, then you, you would probably see them in your your uh, waiting room later part of the year, mm -hmm. uh, in the what we call the bare months. And another factor for that also is uh, particularly with asthmatics, you know, who are uh, reactive to, sensitive to dust. Now, when it comes to summertime, if pa the patient is sensitive to warm or hot weather, then you would expect exacerbations during that time of the year. Does age uh, play a big role in, you know, the, uh, the activity or the um, productivity of one when one uh, has this uh, lung disease? or when one suffers from a cough, or like what you just mentioned, when one is, uh, is not able to go about or to do activities that he used to do? Well, um, one way that we assess patients, especially with COPD, you know, yeah, one way is to ask the patient, are you able to do, these are mostly elderly patients, are you able to do physical exertion like walking, you know, commensurate with the people, of your same age, the same age as you. If you cannot keep up with them, then you suspect there's something wrong. So we need yes. to consult with the doctor right Yes, you ways. need to consult with the doctor. Yes. Age is a very important factor in any organ system uh, dysfunction. All of these organs are affected by the aging process. Thank you very much, doctors. But when we come back, we will be joined by Bea Salapantan, who suffered from spontaneous pneumothorax. You can participate in the discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678 or follow us on Twitter at SolarTVNews, hashtag MedTalk or email us at MedTalk at SolarTV.ph. MedTalk will be right back. A person who smokes a pack of cigarettes a day on the average will use two teeth every 10 years. It is one big dream for a lot of kids to become an athlete and participate in any sports their heart desires. Bea, a 19-year-old college student, had made this dream a reality. But two years ago, she learned of a painful truth. She needs to give up this dream because of a lung ailment. This is her story. Growing up, I was a normal kid, varsity player, athlete, dancer, sobrang bibo kid. Anything I wanted to do, play in the streets, lahat yun nagagawa ko growing up. I was turning 17 pa lang when I found out I had asthma. I was in school and then I was complaining of really, really bad chest pains. And then I said I couldn't breathe and I wanted to go home. Bea was diagnosed with a moderately severe late onset asthma. I think the main symptom was that yung feeling na may nakadagan sa chest ko. Dun ko nalalaman na may paparating ng attack sa akin. The feeling that someone was actually pressing down on my chest. They would bring me to the ER upon my uh, telling them that I was about to have an attack. And naging suke ako sa ER. It was August of this year when doctors found out that one of Bea's lung collapsed. She was diagnosed with pneumothorax. The ailment would change her life forever. I was in school. And then I said na parang there was something wrong with my right side, mabigat. 
And I was telling my mom, it wasn't an asthma attack. She brought me to the ER at night, and then I took an x-ray, and then they diagnosed me with a pneumothorax, with my right lung having 68% of it being collapsed already. In the beginning, I felt na parang kawawa naman ako kasi 17 na ako, tsaka ako nagka-asthma, diba? But then, I f after a while, I realized it was also just for me to take care of myself more. I think, I just like to think of it like I'm just more special than the other kids. I just need a little more attention. Uh, I need to pay attention to myself more than others do. And I think it will just lead to me having to live a better and healthier life. Rin. We're back here on MedTalk, still talking about pulmonary disease. Joining us are our pulmonologists from the finest hospitals in the country today. Also joining us, yung napanood nyo po sa VTR kanina, si Bea Salapantan, who suffered from pneumothorax. Hi Bea, welcome to the show. Hi. How are you? Uh, I'm a lot better now. A lot better. Yes. Can you tell us how it felt? Um, because in the VTR it said that uh, your lungs collapsed. Yes, they did. How, how did you feel that it collapsed? What were you doing at that time? Um, at the time that uh, my right lung collapsed, I was actually in school, walking around, running around with my friends. Um, and then I felt a sharp pain. And then, but I continued with my day. I was just going about, you know, my normal school day. And then um, towards the end of my day, I called up my mom and told her that I think you need to bring me to the hospital because something's not right. It felt like I was drowning, but only on my right side. So I, because I also have asthma, so. I was pretty sure that it wasn't asthma. So when I called my mom, I really forced her to bring me to the hospital. Where did you feel the sharp pain? It started actually um, behind my right lung. I think it started with a sharp back pain. And then I thought it was just me falling asleep the wrong way. So parang may naipit na agad, something like that. So um, I went on with my day and that's where it began. Were you able to, um, let's say, walk at the same pace as you usually do or you were a little bit uh, short of breath? Actually, I, thinking about it now, I was a little bit short of breath walking mm -hmm. and talking to my friends. They were um, actually playing a joke on me. They're asking me, why are you so hingal? And then that's only when I realized that there's really something wrong with me. I actually went to our clinic that same day and then they asked me if I was hungry because it might be sinisik mura. Those are the terms of mm -hmm. our clinic doctors. So it seemed I seem pretty normal, except for the shortness of breath and the pain when I moved to my right, especially. Uh, what could have been a, a trigger or what is the nanggising in the asthma? Niya? Well, that could be several factors. No? Uh, sometimes uh, exposure to an environmental allergen no? or to pollution. No? And uh, many times you, you can't really identify why it suddenly comes out at a certain age. Do you bring inhalers with you to school or wherever you go? Now I do, um, but before, not at all. At that particular time that you had this uh, sharp pain, uh, this happened in your school, did you have uh, inhalers with you at that time? Yes. And did you try to, no. to take that to relieve you of, that, of your symptom no, at that time? No, because the pain was a lot different. Um, when I have an asthma attack, the pain is something like someone's leaning on my chest and that's the pain I go through when I have an asthma attack. During that time, the pain was just on my right. That's why it was a little bit scarier than an asthma attack because it was really just so isolated. It was just there and it was there the whole day. Bakit yung right lung lung? Is there a definition or an explanation to just why one lung feels uh, is weaker or was weaker at that time? Well, probably there was an anatomical, uh, inborn anatomical defect, maybe like a blister or, or uh, we call it a bullet, a bubble inside the lung that suddenly popped. Now, it's quite common in, uh, in people who are slim and tall. Now, not necessarily pretty, but uh, it happens now to these people and it can occur to either lung. Now, usually, of course, it doesn't occur together on both lungs. But the younger you are, and uh, when, when that happens, in general, the better you are able to tolerate you know, something like that because the other lung is healthy. So not like in elder people who are chronic smokers, and this one is 
uh, they, won't, they won't be able to reach the end of the day without rushing to the hospital. Okay. But she's lucky it happened at such an age. You know it so well. Mm. I kind of do now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We have a caller on the line. Uh, we'll get back to Bea and Dr. Sakina and from, uh, Dr. Fabian in a while. Kat Cruz. Hi, Kat. Hi, Miss Angel. Hi, you have a question for yes, our doctors? I have, mm -hmm, I have two questions for you. First is, how is asthma treated? Second, is it curable? Because before, I used to take Simpocort. But after I lose significant amount of weight, my asthma was not secret anymore. Okay. Doctors, is asthma curable? We can think of diseases first, now, which are completely reversible when treated. Now, for example, you have a urinary tract infection, you give antibiotics, you repeat the urinalysis after seven days of antibiotics, the UTI is gone. So that's what you call cure because that is completely reversible. Okay? There are diseases though, which where the word cure is not the operative word but control. So in asthma, we actually use the word asthma control rather than asthma cure. As far as asthma is concerned, there's, there are actually two general categories of medicines for asthma. One, the reliever, uh, reliever category, and the other one is the maintenance or the preventive or the preventers, not the preventive uh, treatment for asthma. Reliever therapy or reliever category of, of uh, medicines for asthma uh, as the word implies, you know, you only take these uh, medicines to relieve you of your, of your symptoms. On the other hand, the, general, the other general category is, is uh, maintenance or preventer. And these are m medicines that you have to maintain yourself on with or without asthma attacks. No? Another question from our Twitter <coughs> account. Rodolfo Sanchez asks, can asthma lead to COPD? it can lead to manifestations just like COPD in, in terms of it becomes irreversible. The, the shortness of breath becomes irreversible because when you examine the airway of a patient with asthma that is not controlled, you have chronic inflammation. So the lining of the airway uh, becomes uh, inflamed, so namamagasya, and since it cannot uh, do that going out, outwards no, because it's limited by the structure of the airway, so a tendency mamagasha going in. So that in effect um, reduces the caliber of the airway. So you start breathing through a narrower air passage, so you tend to be a little more short of breath. Now if you don't relieve that inflammation, if you let that go on for months and years, sooner or later you will have what we call airway remodeling. So if that happens, then even if you treat the asthma properly, you, you could uh, probably reverse the symptoms partially, but you would always have you know, this uh, baseline that you are not as uh, able to do physical exertion as you used to before, just like patients with COPD. Uh, Bea, are you able to do uh, physical activities? Are you able to engage in sports activities? Um, before, I used to be able to, but then after my pneumothorax, um, my doctor advised me to stay away from it, from them actually for the next year. So hopefully after, then the physical activities will hopefully be able to help me to get back to, you know, being normal <laughs> as compared to the other kids who get to go to PE class. Mm -hmm. So no PE for you? No, not for the next not year. Not for now. Not, not for now. now. Yeah, you can trust that this is not going to keep you away from sports forever. No? So... You know, it can happen anytime, but usually the, the risk is not that significant. Okay, we'd like to thank you, Bea, thank you very also. much for uh, sharing your story with all of us. Thanks also. Okay. I hope it helped someone. Yes, I'm sure it did. Thank you once again. Stay healthy and enjoy your youth. I will, for sure. <laughs> Up next, we will be talking about myths surrounding lung disease. You can participate in the discussion by calling our hotline or by following us on Twitter and by email. MedTalk will be right back. On the average, you breathe in about 15 times a minute. If you run fast, it becomes 80 times a minute.
Early detection of lung disease is critical in improving survival of this disease. Spirometry is a procedure that measures one's breath. It's also the most reliable method in testing your lungs. In this procedure, you will be asked to blow into a small tube attached to a machine for as long as you can. It measures lung function, specifically the amount and how long it takes for you to blow air in and out of your lungs. It is an effective way to diagnose or manage asthma and is very helpful to patients that have symptoms of breathlessness. Chest x-rays are the most commonly performed radiographic exam. A chest x-ray is often among the first procedures you will undergo if your doctor suspects you have lung disease. The chest x-ray can also show if you have fluid buildup in the lungs. Having regular blood tests to measure the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide in your blood also helps in determining how healthy your lungs are. Having the knowledge on how to take care of your lungs is half the battle. Armed with enough information, we can easily prevent lung disease. You're still watching MedTalk and we're talking about lung disease. Doctors, let's talk about the myths surrounding lung disease. Number one, do you outgrow asthma? Ah, that's my favorite because I hear that almost every day. I had asthma before. Oh, that's not true. No, you cannot have asthma before. You will always be asthmatic. And that's one of the first things they teach us when we specialize in pulmonary medicine. No, because the reason for that is a lot of patients after a certain age, they stop having attacks as they recognize it. But that doesn't mean you don't have asthma anymore. You don't outgrow asthma. Don't you don't. Out. You can just control it. Yes, that's just what he said before. You can control it, but you cannot cure it. Of course, these, uh, these asthmatics have to be very properly educated about these things, okay? I mean, not because uh, you know that they are controllers, then your asthma is just going to go away like that, you know? You have to know all of these things, you know? You have to uh, uh, couple your, your uh, uh, medications also with what we call environmental engineering, you know? You do not just have to depend on just medications alone. You also have to be aware of your surroundings, you know? Another myth? Surrounding lung disease, do you transmit respiratory disease by sharing utensils and do you also transmit respiratory disease by kissing? Let's talk about the utensils first, by sharing utensils. Well, utensils, of course, uh, we put our utensils uh, into our mouth, okay, not into the lungs, okay, so anything that you put into your mouth will not go to your lungs, but will go to your stomach, your intestines, your gastrointestinal tract. How about kissing? Well, Dr. if uh, well, I usually encounter that question, including the, the segregation of utensils, from my TB patients. Because the disease is primarily airborne in transmission, so you cannot transmit it that way. Now, that kissing part is uh, very interesting. Normally, you cannot transmit it by kissing. No, because most of the time, patients transmit TB by coughing. You don't cough while you kiss. No. But there are some cases when you have cavitary TB, when you have these holes in your lungs. In those cases, the patient doesn't even have to cough. They just have to talk. Now, if the kissing part is associated with heavy breathing, for example, very passionate, then I guess on a theoretical basis, that can happen. Maybe I can conduct a study on that. Yes. How about e-cigarettes? What do you think about that? Well, uh, admittedly, no, we were talking about it uh, earlier. Admittedly, we have not encountered a lot of uh, scientific literature. No, it's mostly brochures about this. No? But uh, they say no, that the actual smoke that you inhale is just water vapor. If that is true, then I guess that's acceptable. And the thing that, uh, that makes them effective in quitting smoking is because you inhale nicotine, which is the addicting part of uh, smoking, minus the carcinogenic uh, uh, things that you inhale with the smoke when you burn tobacco, like tar. 
and other pollutants. No? So, theoretically, it should work, but it does not ad address the addiction. For us doctors, of course, especially for us pulmonologists, we want to go to the bottom line, which is actually to just stop smoking altogether. Okay? Uh, it, it would be easier said than done, you know, but you really have to have a strong will in order to completely stop smoking. Thank you very much, doctors. Any last word to our viewers on how to take good care of our lungs? Well, as a pulmonologist, of course, our number one enemy is uh, tobacco, um, cigarette smoking. Now, uh, I always tell my patients that uh, we have no interest other than your health you know, for us to, to, to argue with you to stop it because we get a lot of financial uh, gain you know, if you continue. So why would we even ask you to stop? That is really bad for you and you can get uh, pulmonary diseases that we cannot possibly cure at this time. Thank you very much, Dr. Fabian. Dr. Aquino, last word? Well, uh, generalities, no? For, of course, live uh, healthy, eat healthy, exercise, okay? Uh, well, as far as specifics are concerned, of course, uh, number one, when people cough, okay, be quite conscious or aware of the people around you. Uh, limit your exposure to all of these allergens if uh, it can be avoided, you know? Uh, smoky places. I'd like to thank our guest doctors for today, Dr. Enrico Aquino and Dr. Noel Fabian, for helping us understand the symptoms, effects, and how to prevent and treat asthma, COPD, and lung disease. Thank you so much, doctors, for the wonderful insights you have provided us. That's all for tonight. See you again next Tuesday on MedTalk, 10 p.m. on your scheduled on-air consultation here on the Solar News Channel. This is Angel Jacob. Good night. Good night.